guys and welcome back to Field Notes. While wandering around Starved Rock a few weeks ago, we saw some of these. Much of that would actually be considered modern day rock art. You may think of a stick figure chasing a deer or praising the sun or even just a handprint, but there are actually a few different types of rock art and drawing on rocks is actually only one of them. The type that we saw at Starved Rock are known as petroglyphs, which is where something has been carved into a rock. Now this can range to the very simple like pits or holes in the rock or they can be very complex relief sculptures. Some of these more simple variations of rock art, the little pits are actually called cupules and these are often considered some of the oldest examples of rock art. However, they remain fairly under researched. Now this could be for several reasons. For one, it has been historically difficult to tell natural pitting in rocks from these cupules and well, pits in rock are just not very sexy and therefore attract less money. Unfortunately, a lot of what gets money and therefore researched is what makes for really good marketing. One of the oldest sites that does contain some research cupules is Chief's Rock in Bihembetka. Bihembetka. Who knows if I'm saying that right? There are nine cupules on Chief's Rock and it is stated in the research that it is pretty hard to date this sort of thing, but they are thought to be about 100,000 years old. There's also a ton of more complex petroglyphs in the form of these relief sculptures and these are some of the ones that I find the most compelling. On to what most people think when they think of rock art and that is cave paintings. Now the technical term for a cave painting is a pictograph. Now the reason they've gotten the kind of colloquial term of cave painting is because a lot of the remaining art is located in caves or in a protected rock overhang. So now why is that? Let's think back to what we know about fossils and preservation bias. The less something, in this case an image on a cave wall or a relief sculpture, has been exposed to the elements, the more likely it is to survive. Do we think that the only places that ancient humans were painting was hidden away underground in caves? No, probably not. That's just where some of our best examples have been found. Something that I wanted to bring up in our discussion of pictographs is that it's not always obvious what you have found. Specifically, some rock art can look very much like a modern day scribble. You're not always overwhelmed with the gravity of a site. Sometimes it just looks like a red spot on a side of a rock. The reason I mention this is I encourage you not to touch them. There's a site in southern Illinois known as Buffalo Rock and I spent a lot of time on the site in my undergrad career and unfortunately there were several instances of vandalism while I was working on it. A lot of it didn't seem malicious, it was simply mindless. It included chalk drawings around the site, duplicating what was already there, or even drawing over it almost in an attempt to highlight it. Drawing on things like rock art can severely damage them and really limits what we're able to tell about a site. For instance, buffalo rock might look like a buffalo to you, it might look like a red blob, but you won't know how interesting that rock art is unless we can study it. Just looking at this red shape on the side of the rock, you wouldn't know that this is one of the only depictions of a buffalo we have this far east. And it's exceptionally interesting because buffalo weren't introduced to Illinois until 1650. This matches some depictions of buffalo that are found farther out west. And one of the lines of thought is that this could actually be from a tribe that was once located out west but was moved to Southern Illinois. This site is federally protected and is on the National Registry, but not all things that are federally protected have a big plaque or a velvet rope, so when in doubt, don't touch it. Also, if you were ever caught vandalizing federally protected rock art, there are serious consequences, like years in jail serious consequences. After that happy discussion of rock art, let's cover the last category, and that's megalithic rock art, or petroforms. Why do I even try saying megalithic? Now this is a smaller category, but deals with much larger forms of rock art. Things like Stonehenge are in this category. Stonehenge is obviously a very famous example, but we also have things like the New Grange Megalithic Tomb and the Noth Megalithic Tomb. These, you can also notice on the sides, have some very intense, very complex petroglyphs. Now you'll probably notice that there's a ton of missing art from these three categories. Things like jewelry and pottery and architecture and ceremonial pieces are all fascinating, but they aren't considered rock art because they aren't on a rock or we have moved very large rocks put them somewhere else so I hope you guys have enjoyed the video be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did remember to comment and subscribe if you haven't already comment down below have you guys ever seen any rock art have you seen Stonehenge have you gone and seen some of these tombs 
super fascinating. I have never gone to see a megalithic one, but you know, there's time still. So I will see you guys very soon with another video. Bye. <clears throat> are you serious? How are you almost dead? I haven't used you for anything. Is my cam, is the, can you look on back of microphone and see if green light is still on? Okay. <laughs> can check to see green light still on. Thank you very much. Okay, now we go on, we talk about pitholes.